as you sat up. Strong hands encircled your neck, pinning you back to the bed. You looked up and saw Quill with a wild look in his eyes. You found out, didn't you? What? I suppose all you lions are this way. Far too curious for their own good. <laughs> Don't worry. I won't kill you. I'll just put a little memory rune on you so that you can forget that tiny mishap of mine. You call putting your friends in a coma a little mishap? The miner sat back. Oh yeah? Then what if your runes fail again and I end up with the same fate as your lion? For once, he looked distraught, not showing that usual cocky demeanor of his. Ah, uh, definitely try to reason with him. Look, if you want me to play along, you have to start talking. Really talk, not those vague rants or awkward long speeches of yours. <sighs> it looks bad. I know it looks bad, but... I swear, all I did was for Lion's sake. Lion's bond, well, it's not right. I can see Lion's not adapting to the bond. I thought Lion was acting weird because of their breakup. At first, I thought they just felt bad for ending things badly, but the drinking, the smoking, those dark circles under their eyes. Lion, they, they even started coughing blood while vacationing in my estate. Only... The blood wasn't red. It was black. Pure black. Almost like ink. A human simply cannot sustain a pure blood witch's bond. When witches bond, they share one body. The dominant retains their form, while the other becomes their shadow. If things go well, the shadows will be in sync. But one night, I saw a lion calling their mom. I could see two shadows, both fighting for dominance, with Lion's shadow being choked by that demon witch of theirs. So their bond was killing him. Yeah. I tried to find help, study all the runes I could find from my family library, but it seems that my overconfidence finally caught up to me. I screwed up. Big time. But that's the whole story. You couldn't just settle that beforehand, you know? You didn't have to go psycho assassin on me. Oh, trust me, it wasn't intentional, darling. In fact, you're the one responsible for me being here. Me? You somehow screwed up your dream protection rune yesterday, didn't you? Um, I might have. Why? Lyle saw Ivor's flower on the floor. That hunky bear of a man nearly had a heart attack and stormed out of the room. Luckily, he ran into me first before alerting anyone else. <sighs> as it dropped Ivor's flower before I blacked out. <sighs> Where is he now? Is he okay? I believe Arsham is calming him down. Don't worry, it's by all the edgy talk. Arsham does. He really is the mom of our group. Won't Lyle blab about the flowers? <laughs> oh, I made sure Lyle will keep his mouth shut for now. By the way, don't think it can distract me. You say you haven't told me how you got the flower in the first place. You're the one who went off on a tangent on your own. And I'll be more than happy to tell you about that. But first. Will you get off me already? You're crushing my pen. <laughs> wait, wait. We've been in this position the whole time. Hello? I mean, wait. Let me give you all a better look. Hey. How's it going? <laughs> you won't mind if I just squeeze a little more like. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, I'm happy that he explained, but. You didn't have to sit on me the entire time. Uh, why are you touching me like that? Um, to get you off? Get me? What do you mean by getting off, you pervert? You're the one with your head in the gutter. I mean, off of me. Also, what's with his reaction? Isn't he supposed to be experienced in the bedroom? You think he'd be used to this kind of thing? Unless... Oh. Oh, oh, I'm a teaser more. Maybe I could. Didn't you want to get... Didn't you want me to get you off, Quill? What? I give him a taste of his own medicine for once. I can do that if you want. Quill immediately jumped off of you, rolling onto the floor. <laughs> oh, 
You okay? N no! I... Ah! With a loud shriek, Quill bumped you in the forehead with all his might. Don't come near me, you creep! Before running out of the door! I guess I went too far, but there's no denying it now. Quill's a virgin. Oh, this is going to be so fun! Pass me the salt, will you, Quill? Of course, lion, darling. Despite his usual act, Quill eyed you wearily as he passed you the salt. <laughs> as he did so, you deliberately grazed and stroked his hand longingly. Touchy-feely today, aren't we, lion? Finally succumbing to my charms. And what if I did? Maybe I finally saw the real you last night, Quill. Quill looks at the side, slightly annoyed. Not so nice being on the receiving end, is it? Meanwhile, Thane and Asham stared at you with their mouths agape. Thane in confusion, Asham in fury. So, uh, you two seem to be getting along. Unbearably so. Oh, I'm just being nice to my hoe of a childhood friend. How many people have you slept with again, buddy? Hundreds? Can you name some of them for me? Oh, well, I mean, there's just so many and I... I can't even name one. Really, Quill? Not even one. Would you like to add one to your registry? Romance is not my thing, Lion. A quick screw and I'm done. But honestly, shouldn't we change the subject? My sex life is hardly an appropriate topic for breakfast. Enough. Rather than Quill's horrible bedroom etiquette, don't you think we have more important things to discuss, Lion? Huh? What happened with Lyle last night? He was in a total panic and wouldn't explain why. Um, he has nightmares of his father sometimes. I think last night was particularly intense. I see. Is that really all? Oh, damn. Is he catching on? Uh, uh who? Who? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I uh, glance at Quill. Quill! 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 Quill mouthed each shit and proceeded to ravish his hash browns. Damn petty virgin. Thankfully, Thane seemed to notice your need of help. Lay off, dude. If Lion says that's all they know, then let's leave it at that. Honestly, can't you be more like last night? I saw you in the kitchen, you know, baking cookies and making hot cocoa for the kid with that pink apron of yours. Why don't you show that motherly side to us for a change? Ah! Asham kicked Thane on the shin, making a loud thumping sound under the table. Again? Dude, learn to take a compliment already. As he giggled, you heard a repeated tap on a glass, calling for your attention. Attention, students. May I have a moment of your time, please? A tall, regal-looking man stood from the teacher's dining section. He must be the headmaster and... Possible love interest? Maybe? Can we date the headmaster? Can we please? I, I know that the developer probably didn't, like, account for this, but I want to date the headmaster! <laughs> <clears throat> Welcome, students. New and familiar to another semester at Igneous Witch Hunting Academy. As the headmaster, I know my greetings are late this semester. However, I was doing my duties for the church, as all of you will one day. As you know, there's no greater duty than serving our country, a duty not so many dare to fill. And with that, I would like to thank all of you for your service, your time, and your sacrifice. May you foster your skills so you may fulfill Lady Cor's dream of a world without her kin. Solaris Agna! Solaris Agna. I have no idea what just happened. Many things were said, but immediately it was understood. He immediately DM'd Quill under the table. Solaris Aigna? Death to all witches! Rumor has it, it was a spell Kor tried to crowd before her death. Huh. Hence the dream of a world without her kin part in his speech. A bit much if you ask me, so... You love hate your siblings? Who doesn't? You're not very religious, are you? Most of us aren't. 
A lot of people became witch hunters not to serve the church, but because it's the highest paying job for our kind. Really? Really? Because do you want to know how much money I made off of fishing? After two days. Hang on, hang on. I need to show you my inventory. 8,866 gold. I could practically buy up the whole shop if I want to. I could buy this university with the amount of gold I've accrued. So what are you talking about, huh? Huh? Being a fisherman is so much better. Also, I did all this off camera because I thought it would be really funny. Uh, also because, like, yeah, I had to, like, restart the game, like, the moment the full game released. So, eh, it was just something I had to do. Anyway, yeah, what else is there? This are becoming livestock for the Vems in Vortec. Personally, I prefer hunting witches than being a 24-7 bloodbath for those human-sized mosquitoes. Well, could you put it that way? Oh, and one more thing. A warning to my new students and others who may need it. In my office, I have what you call the Banshee's Sorrow, a globe containing the cries of Banshees before their untimely deaths. If one of you ever came into my office and touched the globe, not knowing what it was, please come to me immediately, as those who heard said cries would die a most painful and accursed death in less than 72 hours. Oh, no! How painful, you may ask? <laughs> well, your balls would explode and your intestines would prolapse out of your a-hole? Seriously, you would not have a good time. If you come to me, I do have a blessed siren feather that will heal you and cleanse thy sins. That is all, my students, and for the poor misguided fool who snuck into my offers. May Kor be with you. My balls will explode! Hear that line? I wonder who's the idiot who would dare touch Ma Headmaster William's things. Do I need to show you how to actually get into the goddamn office? Because here's the thing. Off cam, I actually did manage to, like, finish, like, some of the side quests, um, as well as the headmaster one. I thought it wouldn't be important. I thought it's not going to be important, but now my balls are going to explode, so I'm going to need to show you how it's done. Ah, frick! Oh, I think they hurt him, Thane. Do you want me to take you to Headmaster William line? I got paper, <laughs> Please, I don't want my balls to explode. Wait, seriously, Lion? Holy! Wow, you're a moron. Oh, shut up, you two. I'm sure Lion had a reason for it. Ignore them. Come on, let's go, Lion. Master William. It's Asham and Lion. Oh, Asham, my boy. Please, come in. When you entered the room, you noticed things had changed since your little break-in. Somehow the room seemed brighter and the sphere you touched looked even more sinister than before. Was it because the headmaster is back in? So, which one of you are going to confess your sins? Unfortunately, Lion is, master. I see. Is everything all right, young lion baker? Uh, what? Your mouth was agape. Do you still have controls of your limbs, or is that banshee curse kicking in? Uh, well, I hope not. Please forgive my friend's stupidity, headmaster. I'm sure lion has their reasons for Snoopy around your office. I had something I needed to get! Or a friend! Yes, well, let's discuss later after we have that curse pulled out of you, all right? Now... Lay your hand, please. Uh, you did as you were told and lay out your hand. As you did so, the headmaster places a single feather onto your palm. Within seconds, you heard those whispers again. A black substance start oozing out of your skin. The feather absorbed it all, turning fully black before crumbling into dust. The deed is done. How are you feeling, my child? I, I don't know. My balls are feeling a little tighter right now, so I'm a little concerned. A little woozy, actually. Ugh. Don't worry. I got you. Asham caught you before you collapsed and laid you onto the nearest couch. He wanted to protest, but couldn't seem to gather the strength to do so. As you rested your head, you could see the ceiling covered in zodiac signs. You wonder if those signs had more meaning now as runes. 
as you were lost in thought. Asham gently stroked her head, calm me down. It was clear that Asham knew you really well, given how he hits all of your favorite spots. Here, have a hotty pop to ease the pain. I'm sure you love them too, Asham. Please, have a piece. No, thank you, sir. For some reason, Asham looked annoyed for a second there. I'm gonna take a piece. What happened just now? The Blessed Feather absorbed the Banshee Curse and healed you. Forgive my foreignness, sir, but why do you have those artifacts in the first place? Aren't Siren Feathers illegal to own? And a Banshee's Sorrow is not... It's considered a dark artifact, is it not? Yes, and yes. As attentive as ever, young Arsham. Unfortunately, I'm a tad obsessed with Sirens and their Banshee counterparts, you see. Both humans and bird hybrids capable of seducing us with their song. But one has the ability to cause instant death, while the other deters us from such fate. What's the trigger? What turns a miracle healing siren into a woe-spreading banshee? And then there's the fact that some sirens can't heal at all, only entrance the person hearing their song to do their bidding. So much we don't know. It's so little time. Fascinating, sir. Still, I don't think that's any reason to keep such hazardous items on campus ground. Only hazardous when one brazenly touches what isn't theirs. Now, are you feeling any better, young baker? Um, I think so. You set up. The dizziness was gone now. Um, I'll ask about the globe. I think you need to put a warning label on that globe thing. Well, to be fair, my child, no one was supposed to enter my office without my permission. I'm surprised you didn't- I'm surprised you didn't hear the whispers. That should have been a clear deterrent, don't you think? Lion has always been an inquisitive person. He just can't resist lurking into the unknown. Ah, oh, yes. That is very true. Can you two not talk like I'm not here? New cur conversation topic. Your curiosity. Right. Then I'll let this little mishap slide since your curiosity almost got the better of you, Lion. But please refrain from breaking into my office in the near future. I'm always here if you need anything. All you need to do is knock. Of course, sir. Ow! As you step outside the headmaster's room, Asham start to mumble under his breath. Racist old coot. Eh, he seemed nice. Huh, good one, Lion. I wasn't being sarcastic. What's wrong? Did you not hear his tone when he offered me the honey pop? You don't like honey pops? I'm a quarter fay. Of course I love them, but that doesn't mean I want him to assume I love them. Okay, okay. Gotta keep that in mind. Okay. Asham loves honey pops. And I'm pretty sure, um, pretty sure like the vampire dude likes like blit pops, so gotta keep that in mind. Yeah. Now you're just being childish. Oh? Were you not bothered by his brand new siren head cane? There's no way that Kane is a fake. The eyes might be off color, but the shape was too accurate. That thing must be a real skull. It just has to be. I hate how he fakes that warm smile of his. It's just to lower people's guard so they'll do his whims. Look who's talking. At least I do it intentionally. Oh well, at least you're self-aware. He naturally does it like it's as easy as breathing. I don't trust him. Despite the sun tense atmosphere, Asham still walked you to class and insisted that you drank some water before heading inside. As you head into your next class, you saw Thane grinning at you and flaunting his fangs. First, we slice up the mushrooms, then add the magic powder. Just a drop will do. Holy water. Just one drop. And of course, grind up the marijuana. Mix them all together. And there we have it! Magic mushrooms! Perfect for a fun weekend inside the house, or to numb the pain from losing all four of your limbs. Penguin, what the heck? Ah, such a sweet smell. I'm sure it'll be fine if I just had a teensy weensy little... Um, Miss Hedwin, you're still teaching. Oh, goodness, pardon me. <clears throat> what you're teaching at the... I mean, preaching at the church? The heck? Now, all of you can try for yourself, my children. Please be modest with the marijuana, though. I'm afraid our school is a tad lacking in funds this year. Best of luck! Now, chop chop! 
In accord, the students took up their knives and started chopping up the ingredients. You follow along. Reading the instructions Miss Hedwin had written on the board. Learn to do a recipe. Magic mushroom. Why would I need to know this? Did Miss Hedwin just attempted to get high in class? It said that like it's the first time this happened. I swear, that woman lost more than her limbs during that war. Can't blame her though. A warrior like that can't help but have some mental scars. Even in Vortac, people sing the Ballad of Hedwin of the Blue Flame. Are witch hunters famous in Vortac? Not particularly, but Miss Hedwin is quite famous on her own. When Miss Volkova was still working in Morse Academy, there were the Academia games where schools compete with each other in various forms of skill and combat. Miss Volkova told me she mistook Miss Hedwin as a stray leech and tried to put her to eternal rest. Miss Hedwin in return nearly burnt Miss Volkova to a crisp. Miss Volkova still apologized even though she was a teacher and Miss Hedwin was a visiting student. Ah, uh, you and Volkova sound close. Can't you tell me more about leeches? Uh, you and Volkova sound close. No, she's like a mother to me. She's the second most important person in my life. Am I the first? Psh you? Ow! Ow, Thane! I know that I'm trying to go for a harem round. I'm not even sure if that's possible. But ow! Don't need to be mean about it. Uh, no, no. I didn't mean it that way. That just caught me off guard, dude. Huh. If you ask me that... If you ask me that when I was a first year, I might have said yes, though. I used to have a crush on you. Did you know that? Wait, really? <laughs> yeah! To this day, I think you're the prettiest man I've ever seen. Prettier than any girl on campus. Then, I knew you and Ashim were a thing. And then, there's a whole weird friendship thing you have with Quill. Also, no offense. You're kind of a... You're kind of awful sometimes. There's just too much history between us now. Huh. So hypothetically, if I still look the way I do, but my entire personality and background were all different, you'd give us a shot? Uh, a thousand percent, yeah. Ow! ow! You turn your head and notice that Thane accidentally nicked himself on his cutting knife. Dark and grainy looking blood start oozing from his finger. Oh well, it'll heal on its own. Look at the blood dripping from Thane's finger seemed to trigger something in you. To back what you and Fia used to play in the garden, and she would always nick her finger on your mother's roses. Without thinking much, you instinctively sucked on Thane's finger? What the hell? I shouldn't have done that. It's not fear, you idiot. Maybe if I laugh it off as a joke. Ah, but wait. This blood is kind of ta- It tastes like ash? Unlike normal blood, his blood tasted stale, with a texture similar to ash. No! Lion! Thane pushed you away and immediately retracted his finger from your mouth. What are you doing? Spit that out! Spit my blood out now! He then violently scraped your tongue with his gloved fingers. <gasps> Thane, what? Shut up, rinse your mouth with this. Thane shoved a glass of holy water to your mouth, pleading you to rinse your mouth with it. Gargle, did you get it all out? Stick your tongue out. I'm fine, I was just trying to help. The wound already closed on its own. I didn't need help. Did you forget what I was? We could have soul bonded. Huh? Honestly, do you pay any attention in class, Lion? Vampires soul bond with a blood exchange and I've already drank your blood. If you drank mine, we would have soul bonded. Seriously, what are you smoking? The weed in the air, probably. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to. I know, still, that was really reckless of you, Lion. What if Ashim found out and killed me? Wait, that's what you were worried about? Well, about his bonding too, but I don't know. I'd rather be with you than anyone else in our quartet. Huh. Likewise, uh, bad. Why? Why do I have to pick? <laughs> Can I? Is there a harem round? Can I have all of them, please? I'm gonna try my best. I'm gonna try to raise everyone's affection points all the way. Like I don't know if that's possible, but I'm gonna try. Likewise. Wait, really? Well, thanks. That doesn't mean I would actually soul bond with you, though. I know. I know. And with that, you continuously make some magic mushrooms. You are able to make a portion for yourself. 
for the next... With the class done, Thane ran into his next class. Your next class should start at 3, so maybe now will be a good time to find Quill. Or Lyle. I really should talk with those two. Lyle especially. Compared to everyone else I've met so far, Lyle seems the most sane of the bunch. Perhaps a bit too pure and soft for this world. Hope I can find him without heading back to the dorm. Just as you headed out of the building, you saw Lyle with a familiar flower in his hands. Lyle! And he's gone! Lyle took one good look at you and bolted. You immediately ran after him. You chased Lyle all the way to the gardens before he could try to run again. You... I... Tackle him! Why are you hugging me? Actually, I was trying to tackle you. I forgot how buff you are for a second there, but at least he stopped running away. Lyle, just what are you doing with that flower? Sending it off to the sea? What? On land. This poor man will never know peace, but at sea. At least he'll stop crying in misery. Crying? Wait, you can hear them? Lyle gave a small nod. Vaguely, they mumble and cry a lot. It's hard to understand them sometimes. This one kept apologizing for cheating on his fiancée. Vera, my sister. I know he's in the wrong, but no sin deserves this kind of punishment. I was only trying to bring his soul some peace. Does that mean seawater kills them? No, they're still cursed with immortality. But he won't get more buds blossoming. I don't know why, but the seawater keeps them in one piece, and the crying usually stops, little by little. I see. Sounds like you've handled this before. My elder brothers told me before they... before the buds grew. Uh, I'm... I'm so sorry. I'm sorry too. Thomas said you met my father in a dream. Thomas? This flower's name. Thomas said you and my father talked about Vera? He says, you're the one who killed her. Oh, damn it. To be fair, she killed someone else first. I guess at her own wedding and I, uh... Are you mad? No. I'm glad, actually. I still remember the many times Vera harmed Yif. She had it coming. Yilf? My brother. He... He was the one who helped me escape. New conversation topic. Ivor's sons. Oh. Have you seen him? Yulf. He's a red rose bouquet now. Is he alright? No blood oozing from his petals? No tears? No. No tears. At least not that I can see, but let's not add the detail. Good. I'm sorry for rummaging through your stuff, but wanted to put Thomas at peace. You let me do that. Please. Of course. In fact, I think I know someone that can help. Pike! Oh, lion! Good to see you, kiddo. And whoa! Who might this strapping fellow be? You fish lad? I could use the muscles out at sea. They can wrangle up tuna with your bare hands. Tuna? Pike, this is Lyle. Lyle, this is Pike. And we have been very well acquainted these past few days. Pike's a fisherman from Lanar, the local fishing village. Pike, sorry to trouble you, but could you set this flower off to sea? Why him? Well, if we set it off here, it'll probably drift back to campus. Would it be... Wouldn't it be better for Thomas to be sent further out? That's true. I didn't think about that. If you want me to send this... You want me to send this flower to the sea, kiddo? Sure. I was just about to head out on there anyway. Not much bite in these waters today. This is a custom of yours. Pretty flower, though. Haven't seen anything like this. You don't know what that flower means? Nah, flowers aren't my thing. Also, lad, I must say, you have some pretty mighty fine peepers on you. So pretty. My, my eyes? They don't bother you. Why would they? No, ah, he's so happy! <laughs> also, I wasn't kidding, Sonny. I could use a man like you around the village. Getting old and need help carrying my catch home every now and then. Is Lyle gonna be a fisherman? Please, for the love of God, I wanna have a fisherman husband. You can do it after class. Carry my fish home, clean out some fish. I'll pay you a good coin for it. Take me with you as you set the flower off, then sure. Deal. Shall we go now then? You don't mind me making a quick stop at Lanar, do you? Oh, well, it's fine. Sail ho! 
As Pike prepared his boat, Lyle turned at you and smiled warmly for once. I'll be off then. Uh, well, I'm gonna pat his head. Why not? With Lyle sitting on the boat, you were now able to pat his head from the pier. <laughs> Try to have fun, okay? And say goodbye to Thomas for me. Right. Um, thank you. Well, off you go now. See you, kiddo. You watch Lyle and Pike set off to sea. That's one issue done. How to find Quill. All right. But I'm not going to do that just yet. I want to explore to see if there's anything new. Anything? Ask the missus inside. Wait, there's nothing else here. Okay, you. Okay, nothing new with you. Nothing new with you. You. There's rumor going around about a group of hitmen targeting nobles. Hence why a lot of nobles are missing or going broke. I wonder if there are any true. Huh. What about you guys? Oh my god, did you see Ashim just now? Is it just me or did he get more hands up? Yep, yep, you're all... You're all, like, flustered over Arsham. All right. Also, I did promise I was going to show how to get to the Hitmaster's office. Hang on a moment. Uh, her first year has Ivor's eyes. Okay, we've already seen this. Uh, we've already seen... Oh, we've not seen this. You should stock up on runing. Heard from my dad there's going to be a shortage. How so? Hey, actually, how are runings made anyway? I mean, aren't they made of... Actually, what are they made of? Don't know. Hey, Lion, take any hunting quests from... Around Gamora lately? I killed two witches over the summer. Maybe you can finally catch up to your record. Okay, whatever. I'm leaving. Uh, I need to show you guys how to actually get into the headmaster's office. So you go to the fountain, right? You got to go to the fountain. You have to... You actually have to click on the fountain. And I've already done this. But basically, like, it'll eventually give you a prompt uh, to pick up the hairpin from the fountain. You go ahead and do that. Okay, then you just... What? No, I did not want to go here. You basically just go over to the classrooms, click on the head ma the principal's office. The principal was in. You had no business here. But yeah, you can click in there. You should be able to like enter the office uh, once you have the hairpin. And then you're supposed to click somewhere on the desk to complete the, um, the quest there. That's how you're supposed to do it. But right now I want to explore just a little more just to see if there's anything I'm missing. Uh, lower gardens, we've already been there. Upper gardens. Okay. If you have too many fish, you don't know what to do. Just give them to the cats. Cats in Gamora love fish. If you have turtles, you can give them to Thane. I heard he likes to drink their blood. Huh. Well, there's Thane, like, in his PNG glory. Uh, I'll speak to him in a bit. Did you know that Vamps and Vortex are trying to create new aircraft? Not one running on ruining, but on blood. Apparently, some Vamps have been drinking enough witch blood to develop powers of their own. Ominous, if you ask me. Right. What about you? Oh, hey. Lion, you fish, right? Sure, uh... I'm Martin, from Potions. Look, can you help me get some materials for Potions? I need two Cloudfishes. They're super annoying to get. I'll give you five baits to start with. Sure, I'll help out. Thanks. Just send them to me via your phone when you're done. Alright, uh... I might as well... You know what? I'm gonna do quite a bit of fishing, so... I will be right back. Eventually. Well, I wanted to go fishing, but then a cutscene happened at the pier. Lyle! Oh, Lion, what brings you here? Fishing? Yeah, I have to catch some fish. I uh, soon needs my help getting two clownfishes. Oh, you're helping us soon now. That's kind of you. So I look so surprised. Sorry, but most students here don't exactly lend a helping hand. Are you good at fishing? I'm alright, so catching a clownfish takes a bit of luck than skill. That's true. Want me help? Oh, I mean, sure. Are you like a fish whisperer or something? Something like that. Wait, why don't you take off his shirt? Oh my god, Lyle! Oh, this... Man, he's popping! He's really popping! I don't like fishing with a rod. <laughs> and with that, Lyle jumped headfirst into the water. His splashes hit your pads, drenching your shoes. What the... In his pass, and Lyle popped out of the water with two wriggling clownfishes in his hands. Here. He changes back into his shirt after dropping two clownfishes into your hands. Did you just dive and catch him by hand? They were already of old age. They said they don't mind being taken above land. You speak fish? A little bit. Huh. I... Can I? I'm gonna touch his chest. You really flaunt your abs everywhere, huh? Please don't touch me. Right, sorry. No harassing the buff beat boy. Got it. 
You seem to know these waters well. I like it here. There's something familiar about this water. Like an old friend or a grandma. A grandma? Ugh, that sounds weird, huh? What I mean is, these waters feel like home. If that makes any sense. Not really, but I guess it feels nice that you found a place that feels like home. Well, anyway, thanks for the clownfish, Lyle. I'm sure Martin will appreciate it. Now I don't have to use any bait. Sure. Maybe we can fish together sometime? Uh, uh, come on, naked! Naked! Let me do it! Let me do the thing! Come on! <laughs> I like that. I like that. Preferably without getting wet, though. Uh, sorry. We'll use rods next time. Deal. Later, Lyle. See ya. But I'm not done. I want to fish. Let me fish. You want to fish for me? Yeah, let's let's fish. And we'll be right back. I swear, I don't have a problem. But anyway, uh, yeah. Let's give the fish to the guy. Oh, hey. By the way, if you caught those clownfishes, just send them to me via your phone. It's less slimy that way. What? O okay. Okay. I'll send them over to the Quest then. Uh, yeah, turn these in. Nice. Okay, any other... I still need to get a... I still need to make a truth tonic somehow. God damn. Uh, anyway. Yo! Uh, hey, lion! Wanna hang? Hang on with they... I'm gonna save just in case. Yeah, let's hang out. Great! I know just the spot. Oh, you wanna hang out? Just the two of us? Sure! You should change it to something more comfortable, and we'll meet up back here. Where are you taking me? It's a surprise! With insistent tugs, Thane led you to the campus gate. He picked up- He picked a locked door, and you climbed a set of stairs to the gate's upper walls. What are we doing here, Thane? Making sure no one's patrolling the gates? Quietly, Thane scoped out the bridge. His eyes glowed a bright red as he did so. Good. We're in the clear. Thane pulled out a blood potion and downed it one go. Then he took off his jacket, tossing your way. Right. Hop on. Whoa. Bat-like wings protruded out from Thane's back. His eyes shone a deep red, and his wings were large enough to smother you whole. As you remain still, entranced by Thane's new form, you notice his eyes starting to dart about. A worried look soon formed on his face. Ugh. I can smell Dietrich's blood close by. We have to go. Quick. Quick? I don't... Wait! Ah! Without warning, Thane scooped you up in his arms and leapt into the air. You flailed in his arms as your screams <laughs> echo through the night air. When you finally landed, you couldn't help but unceremoniously plop down onto the ground. You've never been so grateful to touch gravel in your entire life. Land... Sweet land! Oops, sorry, dude. Guess it's still not used to the flying thing, huh? Um, I'ma play it cool. I, I was secretly anxious back then. Actually, I've never enjoyed flying. All this time, I was only pretending to be alright to save face. I have a fear of heights. Don't know if Lion felt the same way, but like hell am I gonna experience that again? Wait, really? Oh man, why didn't you tell me sooner? If I knew, I wouldn't have flown you here. It's all right. Um, what's your surprise again? Oh, right. Come on. I'll show you a new restaurant I found. Averain! Averish! Uh, sushi restaurant? Not just any sushi restaurant. The workers here are all vampires from Marlana. They serve blood pops, blood shots, raw meat, sushi, and everything. Oh, and they serve normal human food, too, of course. I wasn't going to let you come and watch me eat or anything. That would be weird. Anyway, tonight's my treat, so don't worry about the bill. It's on me. Also, I can finally eat with you. Isn't that nice? I don't have to pretend to play my food while you guys stuff yourselves in the dining hall for once. That's a great thing. You could have taken me here before. That's great. Right? I knew you'd like it. Come on, let's take a seat. Also, I wouldn't mind like having like raw meat sushi. I mean... I've had beef tartare before, and it's great. Thane pulled you to the nearest empty table. The chef greeted you as you got yourself a spot in the sushi bar. Avarain! Avarish! Uh, Zerkov uns via Morlona? Vertek, 
Vesta Zedra, Verkov uh, Zerkov near Hirad, Arya Veletam, Vastis. The sushi chef gives you a thumbs up and turns his back to you, cutting up squid with a loud chopping sound. I'm sorry, what? Sorry about that. It's nice to use my native tongue sometimes. Vampire lingo? <laughs> sure. Also, the formal term for it is Oskuri. Only people in Morlona and Vortex speak the language. It's nice to hear the staff speaking it here. At school, I can only, like, I can only talk like that with Miss Volkova. And you know how much of a talker she is. Anyway, I ordered you some squid sushi since I know you're gonna order that first. Sushi is your favorite, right? Especially calamari. It's always the first thing you grab whenever we have it at school. It's true. I do love squid, but well, this lion does not this lion. Uh, well, what about you? Ah, don't worry. I'll order in a sec. Um, Verlaish, uh, Jewish Zana, Vien. Would you mind teaching me that sometime? Oskuri? Sure, would love to. So I have to warn you, it won't be much use here in Ignea. No one besides Vamps in this country speaks it, so like 20 people? Tops? Whoa, only that many? To be fair, not many Vamps venture out to this side of the world. Too much sun. Sure, we've evolved to endure it, but it's still way too bright for comfort sometimes. I buy fairy essence from Mr. Dietrich every now and then to whiff sun to withstand the sun better. Really? Then why did you move here? Ha! Calling it movie is a bit of a stretch, don't you think, Lion? But well, that's story for some other time. Oh hey, my food's here. Well, avoiding the subject, Thane focused all his attention on this plate. There was something about Thane's statement that intrigued you just now. Was Thane forced to move here? If you played the cards right, he might open up to you a little. Hey, you know what? I'm going to bribe him. Uh, what? God damn it. Uh, I thought I could just give him a turtle. Uh, you know what? Should I touch him somewhere? I'm going to make another save just in case. You know what? Uh, yeah, let's see. I'm going to touch. What? Talk. Wait, no, no, no. Touch. 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 <laughs> no, no, please. No. Uh, no. Boop. Oh, your hands are warm. Feels nice. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about... Um, you know what? I want to talk about... Your mom. Ah, goddammit. Ah, that's a touchy subject. I'd rather not talk about that. What am I supposed to do then? Uh, dream eat us? Ah, there's a very famous dream eat to do in Vortex. Lavender Olivia. They own Ollivander's Nightmare Emporium. Specializing in nightmare potions or dreamless drinks. I hate them. They're very close to Alexei. Whenever they come to visit the palace, blood bags will start killing themselves. It's all because of their eldritch blood. It causes humans to hallucinate and lose their minds. I also heard it has the same effects on witches and werewolves, but they are clever enough to stay away. Vamps seem to be immune to their mind... Well, their mind tricks, and fairies seem to get high off of it. Weird. I completely screwed up. God, I'm rolling it back. So hopefully he doesn't mind if I just keep touching his face. Your hands are warm. Feels nice. I'm going to keep touching your face. Hey, stop pinching me. I'm not fear. I'm going to keep doing it. Stop pinching me. I'm not fear. You know, I realize what you're doing, right? Huh? Make me drop my guard so you can ask about my past. Just so you know, it's not going to happen. No matter how charming you are right now. You think I'm charming? You are, but you need to be. Which is, which is usually when you have something you want. It may work on others, but it wouldn't work on me, Lion, so just drop it and let's enjoy the rest of the night, yeah? Okay, sorry if I made you uncomfortable. It's alright. I know what I've gotten myself into when I decide to be a friend. You and two other weirdos. Hey, it takes a weirdo to know a weirdo. Yeah. You kept the mood light and stuffed yourself with sushi until Thane had to carry you out on his back. You held back the urge to vomit as he flew you back to school. It didn't work. Thane, I'm gonna... <laughs> Thane brought you back to your room after you were done cleaning up. When you walked in, Lyle was already fast asleep. Okay, so 
So I rolled it back quite a bit. Okay, and now we're back in the campus. I I don't want I don't want to progress the storyline with Thane just yet. Uh, okay, we've already seen all this. We've already seen all this. Okay, nothing there. Nothing in the arena. What about the archery field? Uh, students talking should leave and be. The nobles in the castle are getting restless with the sudden disappearances. Some say it's a cult. Others say it's just a rich dude having an orgy together on some tropical island. Who knows? Okay. Ever tried Tiamo's Bakery in Gamora? I know they're technically a family's rival, but their cakes are really good. Right, right. Uh, let's see. Archery field, spar- What about the sparring field? All right. Freaking dire vampire! Well, that man certainly has issues. You should steer clear from him for now. Well, the students are training hard. By the way, got any vital upline? We could use a pick-me-up. I have a big game to go in Chichia. Wouldn't want to disappoint. Chichia. Yep, just me against these big bad wolves up east. Love those big doggos. They're so kind to us. Well, to us at least. To vamps and witches, not so much. They're the only other race I can trust to help us if a real war against the witches ever occur again. Hopefully it won't come down to that though. Anyway, if you have any vital up to spare, send them my way and I'll be sure to compensate you accordingly. That and singing your praises in battle while I'm at Chichia. <laughs> Right, I might as well just hand it in because I do have a vital up. I don't remember when I got this. Yoink. All right, nice. Uh, I still need to get a truth tonic. Frick. Okay, all students are training hard. Lion, thanks again for the vita up. Here, I have something extra for you. Weed? Helen said it helped me. It will help me relax before the battle. I think she forgot that weed is still legal in Chichia. You're the time the party's hard, right, Lion? Remember times we fooled around when you and Asham were on break. How are you two, anyway? Do I still not have a chance? Huh? Uh, forget I said that. Slip of the tongue. No, rewind. Did we date or something? Ow, wow. Am I that forgettable to you? Yeah, we dated over that winter in second year. I wanted things to be official, but you said the only person you'd be willing to marry was yourself, remember? Yeah, sorry. Um. Oh, holy core. You really did forget me. Well, maybe it's for the best. A five would never have a chance with five with a hundred. Should have known. Wait, I. Thanks for the vital up, Lion. The man left without explaining things any further. A oh, dude. Okay. Got to get a good workout before fall comes. It's way too cold to fight outside then. Right. Ain't nothing else there. Are there any students I've not spoken to out here? Can't believe the principal hunts sirens. They're majestic creatures, and they're basically humans outside of their avian forms. I know society thinks they are only useful as pets or trinkets, but still, no one deserves to live out their days being hunted. Like how we hunt witches? That's different! How so? I mean, witches used to be kind to us, you know? Or so did Corsay in her diary entries. What diary entries? The new collection available from the library. You can ask Mr. Kepler for more info. He's ancient. He pretty much knows just about everything. I guess I gotta ask Mr. Kepler about that. The school gets real empty on the weekends. Most flock to the town. Only the shops in Lower Garden are worth visiting. Right, what about these people? Did you know that supposed there's supposed to be a secret dungeon under the lake? They say to enter, you need the light of a tortured soul. Wonder what that means. Light of a tortured soul? What? Thank you for bringing my cat back. I was so worried. Do I not get anything out of that aside from the money? If I only have someone to experiment on. Yep, yep, I know, I know. Okay, let's see. Down with the fountain. Uh, don't need to go to the fishing port. Let's go to the courtyard. Yeah. If you have any questions, okay, seen this. Lion, just, just the guy I wanted to see. Huh? Have you heard? My parents are broke. And my dad, bless him, decided to ship me off to Vortec and sell my body by the gallons to those blood-sucking mosquitoes in Vortec. Well, to hell with that, I say, if those blood knights are after me. That I'm not going without a fight. But I do need her help. Potion brewing isn't really my strong point. I have the materials. Well, the important ones at least. A fire gem. I'm sure you and your connections can find the rest of the things we need. We? Oh, come on, Lion. We used to be such good friends before we became such a control freak. I really don't want to be shipped off to be a bloodbath for the rest of my life. Please. Wait, wait. First off, why are you broke? What happened? Ugh, I think my dad got into a cult. What do you mean? Do you know Mesa's House of Desires? Apparently, he's been throwing all of our mon family money their way. 
Mesa. My dad says it's a charity, but it all seems sus to me. It'll help you up, but maybe postpone the fire, yeah? I might be able to help you before you burn the whole school ablaze. Fine, but make me one anyway. I won't burn the whole school, I swear. Just a bridge, probably. Just make... Just send the potion through your phone. I don't want your hands to burn while you deliver it to me. Right, that was that guy, right? I wonder if the choir will ever perform in Rith. God, I miss the place. Okay, nothing here. What about this person? Her more nobles in Castri have gone missing. Wonder what's up with that. What about this person? Oh, hey, Elan. Oh, wait. Okay, already seen this uh, in the previous playthrough. Oh! Quill! I better save in case this is uh, something important. Frank, uh, yep. After searching around, you saw Quill taking, uh, talking with a young looking freshman. Are you sure about this, Quill? Oh, trust me, Gigi. Once word gets out, we've done the deed. Your father is sure to get rid of that pesky engagement of yours. Don't worry, I'll be sure to praise his skills and still be a gentleman about it. It's what I do. Okay, still, I can't thank you enough and... I can't thank you enough, Quill. And are you sure we don't have to... What are you offering? How forward of you, milady. Frankly speaking, though, I believe you should cherish your virginity for someone you love. Don't waste yourself on a player like me. All right, um, thank you again, Quill. Ta-ta. The young girl left in a hurry. Uh, Virg! <laughs> I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna do it! Quill looks at you in shock. Your voice echoes through the whole church. You can even hear a familiar voice calling out from below. Is that you, Lion? Is everything all right? Shit! Don't you dare answer him! I'll bite his finger. <laughs> Lion? Just, just a mouse, Ajax. How could you... Uh, for... Of all the... For course sake, just come with me! Quill dragged you outside to the balcony. Thankfully, it was less crowded than usual. Then he took off one of his gloves and slapped you across the face of it! Ow! Man, even his slap is posh. What the hell is wrong with you? Hey, back. You have to let me get even somehow. Only fair for the amount of BS you put me through. That aside, mind telling me why you're trying to convince the whole school you're a giant hoe? You won't understand. It's far too complicated for an outsider like you to comprehend. And yet this outsider just discovered your secret. Just try me, Quill. Try me. I dare you. <sighs> Every house needs an heir, and each heir is expected to fulfill their duty of continuing the family line. Marriage, children, you know the deal, and every house wants their heir to partner with the cream of the crop. But I... I don't want that. I want to be wined and dined, courted. Preferably with a rugged man or woman who's not afraid to cry, but a beast in the sheets. Oh, and I want to have a grand flash mob proposal with Lion, Asham, and Thane falling along with pouty faces because my love of forces them to. Oh, oh, and I want that to happen in the school courtyard for all women, particularly Fia, to see. S specific, but okay, I'm not gonna king shame here. Okay, so you want to be romanced, I get it. Totally understandable, but why the lies? Nobles like me don't have the choice of dating their potential spouses. Once our parents have eyes on a particular suitor, then that's it. But if said heir isn't so reputable among the nobles, then it's very unlikely they'll receive a marriage offer in the first place. Oh, so that's what you've been doing? Making yourself look bad so no sane person will ever want to marry their child off to you? Quill, the promiscuous slag! When I walk into a room, that's all I want to hear. All suitors quaking in fear and disgust. A bit dramatic, isn't it? There must be a better way, like saying no. That may work in your world, but not here. Especially not for my father. He... His word is law. I tried saying no once. I even tried playing dumb and lowered my grade so people would think I was an incompetent heir. But all that did was stop me from getting into the schools I wanted. I'm not going to make myself ugly just to repel suitors. I'm desperate, not crazy. Debatable. Well then, no was a no-go. Dumb ruins your job prospects, and so you went with Ho. Exactly! Ah, uh, man, why not give up your status? 
Don't tell me it's because of the money. I'm not Dietrich, thank you very much. Who's Dietrich? I don't- I forgot who Dietrich is! And I'm sure I can become my own man with or without daddy's money. Problem is, my father won't let any of my cousins become the Inkwell heir. Despite me having no interest in the role in the first place. I'm not cut out to be a raven. I love studying runes and learning magic, but killing witches? Yet here you are in a witch hunting school. Only because my father made me attend. The only reason I haven't gone insane yet is because I enjoy studying runes. As far as killing goes, well, lion is the hard part. I have no talent in hand-to-hand -hand combat. My father disagrees, though. To him, I have all the traits of a perfect inkwell, so he really wants me to read... He really wants me to lead the ravens. Perfect inkwell? My talent for runes, my ink-stained white hair, and my green eyes. Those are the ideal traits of the inkwell bloodline. However, a set of good genes is hardly a good reason to choose an heir, talent-wise. My cousin Penna is a far more suitable candidate. I'm only good at runes because I spend so much time studying in my room when everyone thinks I'm screwing around. Penna, on the other hand, is like that 12-year-old with 22 years of work experience or something. That one cousin you always get compared to at family gatherings? Always. If it weren't for my father's meddlings and Pina's coloring, I think my grandpa would have declared him their heir by now. Coloring. His ink black hair and heterochromatic eyes. It's a recurrent it's a recurring defect in my family. Not sure why though. Interesting. <sighs> I see. You know, I did hear some kids talk about your family. Didn't know it was that complex. You have no idea. Oh, yeah, we've learned about Inkwell genetics. Anyway, your secret's safe with me. I know I almost screwed you over back there in the church, but I wasn't actually going to out you. Sorry if I scared you, though. So I'm not making fun of you or anything. Quite the opposite. I found a set of you cute. Like, adorable, really. You had a really cute panic face last night. Made me want to bully you a little. That's a... I... Damn it. I can see why Lion is popular now. Why do you have to have his exact face? Well, since you know my secret, I do have one more favor to ask you. Another one? Oh, don't look so horrified. This one's easy, I swear, so... That favor turned out to be washing up and changing Lion's body out of those dirty clothes. You help? You wish Quill was here to help, but he had class. They're both big... They're both men, so I don't know what's the big issue. Oh well. Layer by layer, you stripped your doppelganger bare. It felt surreal, like look at a reflection of yourself back in the early days of Fia's death. Washing their face, you noticed that Lion was wearing makeup to hide their haggard features. This Lion must have really let everything go. Dark eye bags, hollow cheeks. I can even feel their ribs poking out. I wonder what pushed you this far, Lion. I know I was bad when Fia died. <sighs> Drinking, partying the days away. Still, my friends and family never let it go this bad. And no one come and help you. Huh? As you took pity on your doppelganger's body, you noticed something sticking out from their belt sash. A letter. You opened the mysterious letter and saw the words, For your eyes only. In an instant, the letter contents changed to a full-page handwritten letter addressed to none other than yours truly. The letter read, My one... An only human friend. How are you? I sent your father an invite. I hope you didn't mind. It was the only way I can think of to get your attention again. Don't worry. I didn't enchant it like my other letters. And I know your spineless father won't dare to come to my seedy establishment without his wife's permission. Still, I am hoping you'd come. I yearn for you. Your darkness. Your vile greed. All my love. Mesa. As you finished reading, a strong scent of jasmine lingered through the air. Without missing a beat, you pulled out your phone and start messaging your dad. Dad, did you get a late letter from a woman named Mesa? Oh, hey, Lion. What a pleasant surprise. And yeah, I did. Didn't I mention that to you before? No! Oh, well, it's an invite with only the name... Mesa's House of Desires written on it, addressed to the Baker's family. Okay. Not that I'll humor such an invite, of course. I heard it's something akin to a brothel, with a bar as a front. Right. 
A place where the rich and refined are able to unleash their deepest, darkest desires. Needless to say, I have no wish to visit such a place. I wouldn't want to make your mother worry. But I mean, you're young and single, so would you be interested in scoping the place out? I know you claim to be allergic to the rich, but rubbing elbows with the finest couldn't hurt. Even if the place for such gatherings is quite dodgy, to say the least. I'll check it out. Can you send this letter to me? Of course. Thanks. The letter was sent to your inventory. It had, strong, it had a strong scent of jasmine on it. Inside you saw a golden ticket with the bar's name on it and a note with the instructions. Burn this letter for entry. Let the flames carry you to my domain. Meza was the name Ivor mentioned, and it seems that Lion knew her. So much so that this witch calls him a friend. Just what is going on? Better ask Quill about this. I see. So Lion knew Meza, or it seemed like it. Did you know about this? Of course not, but Lion had a talent of making weird friends. Myself included. Ugh. Still... We now have a way into the Witch of Greed's lair. Yeah, what's the plan? Well, first off, I need to get Asham and Thane involved. So, you're coming with me? What? Well, heavens no! However, I can forge a bounty and ask Asham and Thane to get involved. I'll have to spare some gold and blood to make it believable, but no harm done. Ah, uh, man. You should just come clean. I'm not doing that. Asham will panic, Thane will be confused, and fear. Look, teasing her may be my favorite pastime, but I hate to see that girl cry. I get it. You're trying to protect her. And myself. I still think she'll kill me if she finds out. Just leave it to me, darling. We'll go to her domain together. All four of us. You know, it's interesting. Maze's House of Desires is actually quite famous amongst nobles. The seedier ones, at least. Most believe it to be a strip club with very vague details on what they actually do or where it's located. No one ever seems to properly recall the place. I always thought it was just them being drunk, but I suppose there must be an enchantment that makes people forget. A witch right under the noble's noses. Or working for him. Huh. You don't seem too bothered by this. Well, I had my suspicions. Not on the witch of greed per se, but on the nobles using less than ethical means to get ahead of one another. Hard not to suspect foul play with how often accidental deaths occur among the so-called elites. But to think they'd involve a witch? Why? Would they really stoop so low? I guess that's what we'll be figuring out. Time to prepare myself. If things go according to plan, we should be heading out on Sunday. Yeah, I'll be sure to keep you updated, darling. Good night. Oh, and don't smudge your rune this time. Ah, uh, wait. You don't want to hang out? Excuse you? I feel like you're more tolerable now that I know you're a timid virgin. God, you're not going to let that go, are you? Nah, but anyways, you're the only one who knows my real identity here. I keep some chill town with someone I can drop my mask around. Are you saying you want to wine and dine with me? Sure? If that's what you want, sure. But just so you know, I don't have any cash. I, yeah, I, I don't have cash. Like, no cash at all. Just ignore the amount of gold and fish I have in my inventory. Just ignore all that. Uh, so if we're going anywhere fancy, it's on you. Oh, please. It's not like we can go anywhere my level on a weekday. Give me a second to get changed. It's a school night, so we can't go to Gamora. But I know somewhere we can go. Whoa. Nice view, right? Quill quirked an eyebrow at you. Ah, oh, man, you know what? Stroke his ego. You and the stars look great. Yep, it's breathtaking. You and the view. Huh, such a dull and safe answer. I'll take it. So this is your go-to dating spot? Not exactly. If you must know, you're my first date ever, actually. I took his date genity! I just call it that. Oh, man. Whoa. Really? Don't look at me like that. Between studying and witch hunting, I had very little time to myself, let alone for romance. Well, that's true. Still, stargazing was a good idea. The stars are especially bright here, unlike in my world. 
Actually, that's not a main portion of our date. There's something I'm waiting for. Just not sure how long it'll take. Oh, wait, there it is. Out in the distance, you could hear what seemed like horse hooves running through the lake. Wait, lake? Look out to the water, you could see a pale green horse galloping across the water. Its flowy green mane shone under the moonlight. Whoa, is that a horse? Kelpie. Kelpie. He's a wind spirit. You saw that fire spirit from when Ashram cast his fire rune, right? Well, this one's a wind spirit. It's rare to see him roaming in the wild. Their visages would sometimes appear when you cast, when we cast certain elemental runes. They simply don't compare to the real thing. This place is one of the very few spots you can still see elemental spirits around. No one really knows why. You seem to know a lot about them. <laughs> I do, to be honest. I wanted to study them more and become a zoologist instead of a witch hunter. But of course, the family wouldn't let me. The family. You make it sound like you're part of the mob or something. Oh, believe me, sometimes it truly does feel that way. And poor, fragile little me has to take over the family one day. Fragile, my butt! I saw you beat the crap out of the other lion! Only because lion was worn out and I had a ton of runes hidden under my sleeves. Physically, I'm a delicate little flower. Back when I was younger, I even managed to get a booster shot every month just to get out of bed. Wait, really? Yeah, whenever I was bedridden, lion would come and keep me company. Lion would tell me the usual school gossip, and in return, I would talk their ear off about elemental spirits and the like. When jellyfish season came around, the three of us would try to catch them as they flew out of water. Three of you? Lion, Fia, and I. Also, I guess it's more appropriate to say that Fia and I tried to catch them. Lion would just start shooting them with fire runes. Wow! Well, he truly doesn't have the spirit of fishing, unlike me. Unlike me. Like, come on, look at this hall. Look at this hall. Does this look like the hall of someone who doesn't enjoy fishing? Like, no, sorry. I, I am going to madly disrespect, like, the lion of this world. I'm just saying. Some friend you got there. Lion has their issues, but I assure you, he will never find a more loyal friend. Who wants to care about you, they'll protect you with their life. I just hope I'm not too late to. Huh? You could see Quill climbing up, looking down at his feet with tears welling up in his eyes. Huh. Hug Quill, that's a rough buddy, talk and reassure him. Distract him. I'm sure they're fine. Nope, that's not what I wanted to say. Rolling back, I hug Quill. Who told you you can hug me? Oh lord, Quill. May I please hug you so you won't burst into tears and break my heart? I won't cry. Besides, who hugs someone they once thought was trying to murder them? Oh, my Fia always said I forgive people too easily. Besides, you look like you needed it. Hey, it's okay. They'll wake up. I know they will. After all, you're the great Quill Inkwell, aren't you? <laughs> of course! Miracles are what I do. Quill seemed to appreciate you comforting him, smiling as he walked you back to your room. Your room. Rest for tonight? Not yet. I feel like there's something else going on. Hmm. What's ahead? It's a bit chilly tonight. So, so you went back in after feeling the night air. God damn it! Okay, what is through here? You saw Thane sitting by himself in the living room. Hang out with Thane? Yeah, let's approach him. Oh, you want to hang? Just the two of us? Sure! You should get changed into something more comfortable and we'll meet up back here. Where are you taking me? It's a surprise. Well, we've already seen all this happen, so we're skipping ahead. Okay, so it's just playing around and apparently like three of these answers are like, do give you affection points for him. So if you talk about your curiosity, huh? Your curiosity, huh? I mean, yeah, now that you mention it, you're the time to get into all sorts of trouble just to say your curiosity, huh? Like that time you went into the dungeons and nearly got us all killed because Miss Poppy was in her wolf form. Or the time you sneaked into the teacher's lounge just because you wanted to see the place. I think Quill had the most to say about that, though. Right, and let's see. Weird dreams. Oh, dude, I had a weird dream once. I was a police officer and had lingerie on as a disguise. You know, undercover stuff, and everything looked advanced and fancy. Maybe an alternate universe? Nah, maybe, but I'd rather have a version of me who's a... Who's not a total fanboy, you know? Wait, what do you mean? What do you mean? 
insane. What do you mean? Uh, jellyfish. Jellyfish. I tried to catch jellyfish once. Sadly, they disappear after 24 hours. Wait, what about my fish? What about my jellyfish? No! Oh! When you walked in, Lyle was already fast asleep. You tried to make as little noise as possible before crashing into bed. What? Where am I? I thought forgetting my rune meant visiting Ivar, but... Is this a different witch's dream? You looked around and saw a woman sitting on the edge of the water, seemingly clueless about your presence. Did you come bearing gifts, Apap? At first you thought she was referring to you, but you soon see a white silhouette slithering past you and encircling itself around a woman's figure. Now on her shoulder, you finally noticed that the slithering silhouette was a snake, only lacking its skin and, well, everything else. A familiar red rose was lodged in its mouth before it coughed it up into the woman's hand. Ah, another of dear Ivor's creations, crying out for mercy. You said this one was sent to me by the water. Thomas, is it? Huh. So Ivor's reach has extended to the school at last. Shush, little one. For no matter how hard your cries are, they will not beckon death's sweet embrace. And so I cannot grant your wish. I shall try my best to put your soul at ease. Slowly, the rose was enveloped in light before turning into something else entirely. I've been selling souls! I have been selling people! That's fine. No, it's not. It's not fine. I don't feel okay. No, I am not okay with this. Uh, <laughs> a jellyfish? Dream well, little one. He watched as the jellyfish flew out of her hand, floating peacefully as it passed through the ceiling. Is this where the flying jellyfish in this world come from? Does my deaf center visitor desire my embrace as well? I don't mind! Were you talking about me? The woman paused at you for a second before smiling warmly. The smell of death clings to you like a second skin, but it is a different kind of death, an unworldly kind. You are the unplanned champion, the innocent outsider who will be our demise. As she approached you, you were able to look closer at the lady's eyes. Instead of pupils and irises, her eyes were more like stars. The witch smiled at your entranced expression. Tis not our true moment of meeting, little one. You still have one kin of mine to slay. The witch turned around and walked to the center of the room. Until then, I shall await for your arrival here, in the most blasphemous of secrets. In a tomb where humans and witches tried to be gods. What are you talking about? That is for you to find out, little one. Farewell now. Time to return to your nightmare. Anyway, that's all the time I have for today's episode. Thank you all so much for watching. If you guys do want to play Bewitching Sinners for yourselves, link to the game will be in the description below. God! Damn, I am enjoying this so much, God. I don't know if I ever told you guys, but I really, really do enjoy a good, like, uh, sandbox visual novel. Like, it is... God, I'm so glad I'm finally able to play one for the channel, because, like... God, I love these kind of games so much. And I've got so much fish to sell. <laughs> look, look, I'm just saying, if you give me the opportunity to absolutely ruin the economy of, like, any given place, I will. I will do it. <laughs> but anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all have a lovely rest of the day. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion, signing off. Ciao.